morning. Awkward moment. <laughs> Let's see who turns up today. Somebody. Good morning, Scott. Good to see you. Morning, Matt. Rosie. Joan. Nice to see you. Hope you're well, everyone. What a beautiful day, hey? We're in for a hot one, I believe, today. It is barbecue weather. It's time to get outside and enjoy it whilst we can, hey? <laughs> Hope you're well. While we're waiting, we're just, uh, if you've got your Bibles and stuff, we're going to be uh, reading in Joshua 6 today whilst we... Um... Oh, you have a daughter, Scott. Hello, Evie. Nice of you to join us. Uh, yeah, we'll be reading Joshua 6, if you want to get that out and ready. Morning, Pat. Morning, Matt. And Sarah and Claire. Morning, morning. It's me today. I've got. I've had to do two because Andy decides to go on holiday. So uh, <laughs> what a slacker, eh? <laughs> wow, Scott, four daughters and a son. Wow, you've topped me. <laughs> Morning, Tack. Okay, so we're going to be um, finishing off uh, Joshua. We're just doing one to six, I believe unless we change our mind um oh that's great joan to hear that you're reading joshua so um yeah we're going to be finishing this off today is joshua 6 so i'm just going to get straight back into it uh reading it and then um just a, a a thought to pull out from it um well i hope it will encourage you so matthew 6 i'm going to read straight through i'm going to be quick <laughs> Okay, here we go. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up every man straight in. Famous, famous story. We know, we know this story. Carry on. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests to their, to, and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the people, Advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding. Who's in for, who's up for the trumpets coming back to church? <laughs> I remember Josh, he, my brother Joshua, <laughs> coincidence, <laughs> um, he um, used to play the trumpet. I don't think he really liked it very much but he used to, anyway, side note. <laughs> Uh, verse 10, but Joshua had commanded the people, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout, then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the people returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the Ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them and the rear guard followed the Ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to camp. They did this for six days. 
On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you this city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things, so that you will not bring your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must, be, and must go into his treasury. Nearly done. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the walls collapsed. So every man charged straight in, and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young men who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab, her father and mother and brothers and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it. But they put the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho and she, lived, and she lives among the Israelites to this day. At this time, Joshua pronounced this solemn oath, Cursed before the Lord is the man who undertakes to rebuild this city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son will he lay its foundations. At the cost of his youngest will he set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame spread throughout the land. So um, it's interesting that um, I, I took the devotion on Tuesday and it was all about Rahab and her story. And um, I brought a few points out about what we can learn from her story. And um, it's interesting that I get to, <laughs> that she's in this chapter as well. And it's all part of the story and the win. And I, I want to, the point that I want to bring out today is that the victory is worth the wait. The victory is worth the wait. Morning, Sean. Happy birthday. <laughs> hmm. Victory is worth the, rate, the wait. So Rahab is in her home. She's, um, she's watching those Israelites walking round and round. And you can imagine her family just saying to her, Rahab, what are they doing? They don't look like um, an army that is ready to fight, that is ready to win the battle. They just don't look like, you know, they're, what are they doing? They're just walking around in silence. They're not doing much. I don't see how they're going to win this battle for us, Rahab. Um, and you can imagine the conversations that Rahab is having in her home. They're looking, it gets to like the third or the fourth day. By the fifth day, they've probably thought, that's it. Um, Rahab, we might as well just make our escape now. Let's just go and jump over that wall. I've had enough. We're, we're losing our patience. We cannot see this victory happening. I don't think those sp spies are going to come in um, and win that victory for us and save us. You can imagine that conversation. Did we really think we would find ourselves in lockdown during this time? You can see that Rahab she was in her own lockdown, right? And her family, they were all together in this lockdown situation, just like we have been finding ourselves in recently. But Rahab, she had to be patient. She had to wait for the victory. The victory was worth the wait though, wasn't it? So just imagine how different the story of Rahab would have been if she'd just legged it over that wall, if she'd cut it short. Her le she wouldn't le have left much of a legacy behind because we know later on in the story, if you know your Bible, that you know um, Rahab um, was pa all part of the lineage of Jesus. You may be feeling this morning that you're running out of patience, that literally sick of hearing the word COVID or pandemic or si sick of hearing all these latest restrictions even and you know you just want to get on with life we want things back to normal 
maybe you're waiting and waiting for God to answer the prayers that you're crying out for, you know, prayers of finance, relationships, um, job situation, you know, you're really pressing into God and really desperately wanting him to answer um, the, your battle. You may be feeling like you just want to do what Rahab's family was probably suggesting. Let's just jump over that wall. Let's just let's just throw it all in we've just had enough we've got no patience left anymore is God really going to come through for us I remember I've shared this before um, a couple of times actually when I was at school I hated running and um, I always used to try and I always found a shortcut we used to run around a um, uh, a big park in Liverpool Sefton Park and um, I remember me and my friend we hated running hated it and so um, we would often <laughs> sneak through the woods and then catch up um, and we'd always get caught out it was rubbish we'd take a shortcut it was, but it was never um, it, it, it was never helpful because there were consequences to the shortcuts she our PE teacher made us run around that that park again there was consequences like Abraham um, he took a consequence he was sick of waiting for that baby and so he had uh, he took a shortcut and had a baby with Hagar there were consequences to those shortcuts wasn't there the nations against nations relationship breakdowns uh, Lazarus he had to wait two days for his miracle uh, to be raised back to life again you may be um, finding uh, a shortcut maybe you just want to take that shortcut maybe you just want to um, throw it all in maybe he had we have to wait those six days those seven days maybe we have to wait the six months or six years 40 years for the Israelites um, but seven days for Rahab and her family they had to wait but we need to be like Rahab we need to have that kind of patience who um, who is really persevering and, and really um, pressing into God because the wait is worth it the wait is worth the victory right God is doing something so bigger than what we can imagine and often during the waiting season that we can't see what is happening behind the scenes but God is working everything um, to, um, to the good right he's working it all into our favor you may be thinking that it's passive that you're just not doing anything but actually waiting is active it's not passive the victory is worth the wait so we can trust that God of grace he goes before us he prepares the way for us trust him keep fighting keep pressing in keep walking keep walking step by step um, and see that God will he is a God of the breakthrough he will knock those down those walls of Jericho he will knock what what needs to be knocked down he will come through for you um, God is the one who protects us he's the one who cares for us and he loves us and he's the one that fights for us and besides us through all our trials right and that's just the what thought that I wanted to bring out today nice short and sweet but um but yeah the victory is worth the wait keep believing keep pressing in get people around you who will believe with you and stand with you we need each other don't we to carry us through and um so yeah just let me pray for you Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you, God, that you are the God of the breakthroughs. Lord, you have won the victory for us already. You've overcome everything for us, Lord. And I just pray for those people who are feeling the battle, who are feeling tired, who are feeling Lord, just worn out from fighting. God, I just pray that you'll come alongside them. Lord, that they know that you are standing with them, that you've already won it. Lord, help them, Lord, just to um, gather their strength. It says in Isaiah that you know um as we wait upon the lord as we wait upon you lord that you are the one who gives us strength that we can soar um with you god i just pray for that the miraculous strength and grace lord i thank you jesus that you have overcome everything you overcame death thank you jesus so much and lord i just pray that um you will persevere to see the victories the win is worth the wait the victories are worth the wait in jesus name amen Amen. Be blessed. Have a beautiful sunny day ahead. Um, don't get too burnt. And we'll see you on Sunday morning for church, 11 a.m. Um, on Facebook, YouTube, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> Facebook and YouTube. Ooh, should know this by now. Come on, Lee. So enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Bye.